Okay, hello my friends. This is breaking news. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but Joe Biden has just officially dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. This is official. Uh, this is an NBC News. This is not a joke. Uh, we'll see Biden's official uh, letter that he posted as well. Biden, after a five-decade political career, faced a reckoning over his age and whether he could defeat Donald Trump. His party now faces a historic effort to replace him. So here's the Washington or the NBC News article. Joe Biden announced Sunday that he will end his political re-election campaign, bringing an abrupt and humbling conclusion to his half-century-long political career, scrambling the race for the White House just four months before Election Day. Biden, 81, could not reverse growing sentiment within his party that he was too frail to serve and destined to lose to Donald Trump in November. Now, this came from his party. This did not come from the Republicans. I saw stuff on Fox News last week that Republicans actually wanted him to stay in the race. They were preparing lawsuits to bring to bear, that they may still bring to bear, but I don't think it'll go anywhere, to keep him in the race or to sue in case he did drop out because they believe that he was that beatable. Okay, this is his actual letter. I will address this on the other side of reading these news pieces from NBC. While it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it's in, my, in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term, Biden wrote in a letter posted on X, and we're going to read the whole letter. Now, that raises a couple of interesting thoughts. I saw another commentator yesterday or the day before say, look, if he's too old to be president like in the next election, how is he not like if if he can't do it, if he has these acuity problems now, why why doesn't he have an acuity problem like if he has it for January, why doesn't he have it now? Maybe he should resign now. Now I'm not saying that he should. I'm saying like that that's an interesting thought. And let Harris become president now. If he were to resign today, Harris becoming president now would actually give her a leg up and going into the actual election. Anyway, uh, so Biden thanked Vice President Kamala Harris for, quote, being an extraordinary partner, but did not endorse her to be his replacement as the Democratic Party presidential nominee in his letter. That's that's really big because that means it's an open field and Harris doesn't have the leg up that she otherwise might have had. His withdrawal caps a singular national political career, and you can't take that away from him. He's been in office in one way or another for like 50 years. Book ended by Richard Nixon's fall and the Trump rise. He mounted four presidential bids. Did you know that? He tried to run for president three times before uh, 2020. He spent 36 years in the U.S. Senate representing tiny Delaware. He rose to the chairmanships of the powerful Judiciary and Foreign Relations Committees, and he served eight years as Barack Obama's vice president. Biden's decision to exit the race less than a month before his party's convention and a few months before voters head to the polls is unprecedented in the modern political era. This It really is. And it puts the Democrats in a really bad place because they were betting on him being able to push through. And now, like, all the primary votes for him, well, they're just... Now that he's stepped away, it's open delegates, and now they have to figure out what to do. So if you were on the Democratic side of the political spectrum in the U.S. and you voted for Biden, it was meaningless. Now it's going to an open convention, and the party electors are going to have to figure out what are they going to do. Last sitting president to abandon a re-election bid was Lyndon Johnson, whose expansion of the Vietnam War in the 1960s split the Democrat Party. But Johnson's announcement came in March in 1968, eight months before the election. So go back to March, we were still in early primary season, and that would have been the appropriate time to be like, you know what, or actually a little bit earlier, to say, I'm not going to run, uh, you guys fight it out. But we didn't do that. Because, you know, it wasn't until the whole country saw Biden's performance the other night that he was that you started hearing the real calls for that because everybody was aware, like, uh, I don't think he's got the stuff to keep going. Now, I'm not taking anything away from him. 50 years, that's nothing to turn your nose at, but public recognized, and then it was it was pushing from the Democratic side, not the Republican side, that ultimately pushed him out. We're in uncharted waters, said Barbara Perry, a presidential studies uh, professor at the University of Virginia's Miller Center. No president has dropped out or died this close to the convention. So it is like 
And what are we going to do at this point? Replacing Biden atop the Democrat ticket is likely to set off internal Democratic tremors as ambitious officials maneuver to become his successor. Factions have already formed around Harris, and that would be a given, and prominent governors, including uh, Michigan's Gretchen Whitmer and Governor uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom. I think Gavin Newsom would be a very bad choice uh, because he'll be easy to contrast again. Others that are less well known would be a little bit harder for Trump, but that's just my two cents. Now, I was looking at the predicted market yesterday and I saw this. I thought this was this was just wild. Democrat 2024, and this was yesterday. Uh, Kamala Harris, who will be the nominee? Kamala Harris at 52 cents versus 33 cents for Joe Biden's. Uh, and then when you saw that, okay, so assuming that she's the winner, um, then 2024 election winner, Donald Trump at 62% over Kamala Harris at 27%. So that tells you where the prediction market is about how Kamala will do. So they're looking for someone else to fill the void. Harris, it would seem, would be the heir apparent. She broke a barrier as the first female vice president. She's also a woman of color. She enjoys strong support among African Americans. That's all meaningful on the left side of the spectrum. That doesn't resonate nearly as much with moderates in the center or with Republicans, those of extra factors. Okay, although Harris's approval rating stood at only 32% in an NBC News poll released earlier this month. So she's not well liked enough to be like, yes, let's run her. This will this will definitely beat Trump. I know that if you're on the left, you're like, anything could be Trump. But you got to remember, moderates and conservatives don't necessarily see the same way as those on the left. Okay. There is no one you can name right now who is an obvious substitute, Perry said. That's what makes this so uncertain and chaotic. The mechanics of putting on uh, putting a new name on the ballots also gives rise to legal questions, and that could be tricky. Like, if you can't get on, he or she, whoever the, the candidate is, can't get on the ballot, you lose electors automatically if they can't write in enough. So that could be problematic. Uh, unpersuaded Democrat lawmakers began calling on him to step aside, a rebellion that started slowly but grew steadily in size and intensity. They appealed to Biden's patriotism, arguing that if he sincerely believed that Trump's a threat to democracy, he needed to put his country first and stand down. So he'll go down in history both of being too old and he had to stand down, but he was willing to do it for the sake of the greater good. I, I think that's what how he'll be painted later on. Both the too old and for the greater good was willing to relinquish the sword and be Cincinnati and that sort of thing. Um, in another bit of bad fortune and timing, Biden tested positive. I, I put this on the community tab. Like this guy can't get a cut a break. Like <laughs> uh, he got COVID while uh, Trump was uh, at the convention after his assassination attempt and looking better. Like the contrast couldn't have been more stark. Biden's initial uh, Biden's illness created an unwanted contrast while Trump delivered a triumphal speech accepting the Republican nomination in Milwaukee five days after surviving the assassination attempt. And the article goes on and on, and I'm not going to read the rest of the article. I want to show you the actual, uh, he posted on Twitter, the actual letter to the nation. And then we're going to read that. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. We have made historic investments in rebuilding our nation, in lowering prescription drug costs for seniors, and in expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in over 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the uh, most significant climate legislation in the history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are are today. I'm suspending all my commentary just in deference to what he has to say. I have my own thoughts, but let's just hear him. I know none of this could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once-in-a-century pandemic, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president, and while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it's in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation 
in later this week in more detail about my decision. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Pre Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all this work, and let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States of America, Joe Biden. So that's the official letter. President Biden will not be seeking a second term. All right. Tell me what you thought about this or add any nuance that you understand in the comments below. Thank you for doing that in advance. Please be kind in these comments and don't say mean or rude or whatever things. Just help us understand what's going on. Thank you for the time, the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.